Then we get Idris Elba doing some science. Shirtless naked for science. some reason. Yeah. Why was he doing naked dissection at his desk? That is contraindicated. <laughs> I never <laughs> once taught my students to take off their clothes before they did dissection. Okay, 100%. The director was like, time for a big science moment. So, Idris, you better pop the shirt. I'm fucking... <laughs> For yeah. the science. Yeah, I was going to say, were any of your students Idris Elba? Because I feel like you would have taught Idris Elba <laughs> to do science with his shirt off. Truth. I'd have taught him to do drama with his shirt off. <laughs> Truth. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies. Where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting somewhere in New York's lobby, known as New Jersey, is my good friend Eli Bosnick. <laughs> Eli, how's it going? I'm fantastic, Heath. Pop scare greeting. Pop scare. <laughs> no, that, that's nothing. You can't just say pop scare. Sorry. That's sorry. I, well, I watched the movie. There. I'm a little confused. Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. We'll get to it. Not great with the pop scares. Also joining me is veteran guest maskist. Science communicator, podcaster, and tweeter of fascinating nerd stuff that I never know about when I see it, but then I know about it and it's awesome. Kara Santa Maria is joining us. Kara, welcome back. Unhappy to be here as always, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Who could blame you? Yep. <laughs> okay, was there a bird that was part female gender on left side and part male gender on right side? Was that how that worked? Yeah, Ganatomorph. Pretty cool. That's Pretty cool. Okay, okay. I, saw that I thought you were talking about the movie for a second. No, nope. back to Twitter. <laughs> okay, I had a. T I was like, man, I really did not pay attention to this movie. I missed a bird with half a dick. All right, <laughs> losing my edge. And then they caught a poacher with 3D printed eggs that have like a tracker in them. Is that the last one I saw? Oh yeah, that that's the Nicaraguan turtle eggs. That one's really cool. That story's been going on for a long time, and they that's use like a great. Hollywood set decoration to make these eggs look as real as possible. <laughs> and they get poachers to, to take them and then they're just like, ha, ah, we caught you because you're just stupid and you took our, our tracker. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Great. It's great, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we got to talk about this movie too. Technically, <laughs> it's the show. Fine. So Kara, what uh, 8% on Rotten Tomatoes movie are we going to be talking about today? Yeah, so this is Stringer Bell's Rock Bottom, 2007 <laughs> for the reaping. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, so oh. sad. Idris Elba's in it. I love him, and he's everything about this movie, movie makes no sense. Needed someone to go really, including the title, right? At, <laughs> starting at the title, where someone was like, "Let's call it the raping." Sorry, the what? what? <laughs> Can we not? And I feel like they didn't even reference that until like. 20 minutes before the movie was over. Yeah. I was like, what is the reaping? I actually asked myself that at one point. Like, why is this movie called The Reaping? And then one person said, like, we need to reap her or something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I was going to ask, why is it called The Reaping? Yeah. I, think, I don't know. I saw the whole movie. The sickle, right. maybe? I don't know. <laughs> this movie bats a lot of cleanup in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you see, this plot has been bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Out the window. Duh. Yeah. Credits. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of which, why don't you tell us a little bit more in detail? How bad was this movie, Eli? Well, if you love horror movies, but you're tired of all the motivated tension, realistic backstories and non weird racism, <laughs> you will love this movie. When people bring this movie up to Hillary Swank, she changes the subject to Karate Kid 3 and Clint Eastwood's politics. That's how bad this movie is. <laughs> Okay, Karate Kid 3 is a classic. No, but no. Nope. next karate. She's in the next gotta karate. Gotta let it go. Three you gotta let it was, go. It's not it's a good not movie. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's important. <laughs> Both not great. One and two. Oh, anyway. <laughs> anyway, moving on. I'm, not, I'm going right past it. Cobra Kai, not a big deal. <laughs> is there anything y'all would like to nominate this movie for being the best at being the worst at? I'll nominate it for the best, worst overuse of dream sequences. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> There's wrong. a lot of those. As you call them, doodly doos. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They get confused by what level of doodly do they're on a few times. <laughs> it's fun. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I was going to go with best, worst use of Nextel technology. <laughs> <laughs> so most of the movie is out in some remote bayou town that has no cell phone reception. So they use that. God, that 
that Nextel bleep bleep walkie talkie <laughs> function the whole time. I hate everyone who ever used that thing. I hate you so much. Oh, it gets them into trouble at one it, point in the movie. Yes. And that made me very, very happy because <laughs> yeah. at one point, Hillary Swank's trying to hide from uh, a bad guy in a scary basement. <laughs> She's trying to be all quiet. And it's like, bleep, bleep, Catherine. <laughs> bleep, bleep, Catherine. Bleep, Catherine. Okay, if you're hiding from a demon, say nothing. I <laughs> laughed for a while when she got bleep, bleep. Or she's trying to hide. That was so fun. Good times. And I have hinted at this very mildly, but I was going to go with best, worst, pop scares. Oh, Whoever so made many. this movie was aware that a pop scare is a sudden string with... An image you didn't expect, but they do it with <laughs> breakfast cereal, <laughs> dirty feet, flies. A gr I mean, there there will be nothing that this movie can't think it can just shake at us and go ooga booga booga and make itself a horror movie. <laughs> Get a corn pop scare with that cereal. Yeah. Good times. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break so I can watch Clint Eastwood talk to a chair for a while. That's the... <laughs> Republican platform right now, and then we'll be right back <laughs> to tell you all about the reaping. Uh, God? Yes, Gabriel. What is it? Yeah, we got word of a satanic cult down in Louisiana killing firstborns, so but you might want to, you know, wrath it up. Yes, like wrath it up. Nice. Yeah, so uh, what are you thinking for the wrath? All right. Why don't we start by turning the water to blood. Haha, <laughs> nice. Classic one. Love it. Okay. And uh, then what? Right, right. Uh, then we make it rain frogs. Frogs. Oh, okay. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so Something the matter, Gabriel? No, 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 no. Uh, it's just, you know, we don't... D didn't we do those before? Exactly that stuff in Egypt? I mean, yes, but they worked in Egypt, didn't they? I mean, did they? Because Pharaoh ignored all of them. And, and then we killed all the firstborns, and he still sent the army. So, like, right, it didn't... Right, but the story, though, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, the story's good, I guess. I mean, you did kill a bunch of babies. Uh, firstborn babies. First, firstborn, yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, you know what? Fine, let's, let's do a new one. Great, okay. Yeah, so after the frogs, we'll give them li li lice. No, Is not lice. Th nope, because that's the old okay. thing. That Right. Lysol. You, Lysol? Is that what you were going to say there? Mm -hmm. You meant to say Lysol? Yes. You want the third plague to be Lysol? Lysol. By, the, by Procter and Gamble. Lock that in? Mm -hmm. Okay. By Procter and Gamble, right. Um, and, and then what after that? Lysol. Lysol. Yep. Mm. It's, uh, that sounds a lot like flies. It's, it's, Again, it's you've, Lysol, like you've but with, it. with flies it's, in it. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to start with a cold open in a creepy bedroom. I think I couldn't see the movie for the first like 20 seconds. It was not, it was complete darkness. But then we realized we're in a creepy bedroom where some guy is waking up to his Framed picture on fire. Okay, I want to clarify this because when you make it to the end of this movie, this guy's entire fucking thing makes no sense. <laughs> no. He is. That's just, that right there is a summary of the whole fucking movie, yeah. Eli. Yeah, exactly. It makes no <laughs> sense right now either. Like, None if you of watch the whole movie, sense. it continues to not make sense. This is nonsense. <laughs> yeah. But Hilary Swank, who is our protagonist, this is her priest friend. So we open up on him having a framed picture of Hillary Swank on his desk, <laughs> whose face lights on fire for no reason. Wait, how did you know it was her? Her face was on fire. Well, he calls her. Oh, does he call her right here? He yeah. does call her, but I didn't know. Oh, I thought he was just randomly like, hey, Hillary Swank, my wife's face is on fire. <laughs> in my picture. So funny story. <laughs> my wife's face was on fire again in the picture of her. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> so are you like still what on you doing? Million Dollar Baby? Or are you just okay. crazy? Okay, bye. Late. You're sleeping? Okay, Click. bye. <laughs> yep. He also seemed like 
weirdly familiar with the whole face burning scenario. Like he, yes. he looked a little <laughs> concerned. Ridiculous. Like he was like, ah, oh, fuck, this is happening again. But like <laughs> very much like, oh, the face is on fire. That's the thing. Cause he, he goes into his desk drawer and is like, I wonder if her face is on fire at all the photos I have of her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So very, man, very weird. But this ruined all my other pictures magically again. I better check them. <laughs> and then I bet, you know what? I better assemble them like a puzzle. Well, you know what? That's meaningless because, you know, you can just put pictures any direction in order <laughs> anywhere on a flat surface. I guess, you know, this is where they go. And it makes the shape of, we're about to find out, a sickle, but not really. Yeah, that's what they call it. It's really just like yeah, an upside down say. question mark. Yeah. This this movie will insist it's a sickle, but it's an O with a cross <laughs> yeah, on top of it. Right? There was... Props and script did not have the conversation they needed to. And see, when I saw that they had just burned out the face on a bunch of pictures, I wrote, oh, he's being haunted by the ghost of a manic pixie dream girl trying to get over a boyfriend. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but now it's time to introduce our protagonist, Hilary Swank, and she is in Concepcion, Chile, yeah. which is right next to Pull Out Method, Chile. By the way. <laughs> uh, and she's walking among the huddled masses. It's subtle. Yeah, she's um, Concepcion, a classic Chile. tourist in Concepcion, just walking around in her, you know, her button down REI shirt, <laughs> her sunglasses. And then Idris Elba is behind her and he's wearing a giant cross, which oh, I love. Yeah. It's, it's very Idris subtle, Elba. almost as subtle mm. as Concepcion. Yeah, the, the subtlety is immaculate. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's yeah. in Concepcion. I like that. Yeah. yeah. But Idris Elba and Hillary, like, it's a very confused, like, intellectually confusing, sexually confusing. Like, I know it's a bad movie I'm about to watch. I love him so much. But you can always look at Idris. It's bell. true. And there's a lot of. Oh, that was like the only saving grace of this movie is that he was, you know, he was sexy. Those traps. And he <laughs> kind of made it through a fair amount of it. He did. Yeah. He did. <laughs> yeah. No spoilers. More than you would guess. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they're they're walking around sort of grimy alleyway chilly. <laughs> and they're sort of examining everyone to check out something spooky that's happening inside. So we make it inside this church and we see that like all the people are gathered around a dead guy who hasn't rotted as quickly as he should have. <laughs> Right. And and for mm -hmm. some reason, all of a sudden, Hillary Swank and Idris Elba, who those are their names, by the way. I don't remember <laughs> yeah, their we're movie not, names. We're not yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they're wearing these like weird gas masks. I don't know what they are, but it does not look like proper medical PPE. It's like they made them themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody else is like nobody else seems concerned at all but they're like we should probably wear masks no gloves lots of exposed skin but we'll wear masks just to be safe <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> however we find out that compared to the crowd they're in they're downright safety oriented because we we watch as hillary stop someone from feeding their daughter the oil on the corpse's forehead did i <laughs> no yeah that's what did I see that right yeah. <laughs> yep, that's what happened. She's like, guys, guys, don't rub the death sweat on your eyes. That's don't eat it either. Don't do what's happening. And it was None it was like slimy oil. Like I don't know what they used. It's like they just rubbed Vaseline all over a mannequin. Yeah, I think that's what it was. But at this point, I'm getting pissed at this movie already because the audio levels are so shitty. I can't understand what anybody is saying. I literally had to turn my TV up to 75. It only goes up to like 85. I had to turn it up to. 75. 75 when it's usually between 15 and 30 on the volume bar. Like, what is wrong with this movie? Amazon's like, you sure you want to hear this one? Maybe just keep it in the background. Maybe just watch Idris Elba, the video. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, she stops someone from rubbing the dead oil on the face and then they check out underneath where the dead body is. <laughs> That's weird. They sort of go through some spooky tunnels. I, I wrote in my notes, oh shit, someone left a haunted house sound effects CD on down here. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we, it's like there's a, he's in an open coffin, I think. And then they're like, ooh, a slit of light. Let's go to it now. Yep. Which never is a good idea. Like I know. I'm going to go into the scary basement that smells weird. That's just Let's do it. Basic movie 101 right there. But she's like, yeah, let's take a let's take the secret tunnel of blood, right? We should do that. <laughs> He's like, should we though? Cause I don't know. And she's like, well, I'm gonna climb the secret ladder of blood because that's where it leads <laughs> up to somewhere. Probably fun. Yeah. 
And he's like constantly kissing and like fiddling with his crucifix. This is like their way to telegraph to us that this guy's religious. Super subtle. <laughs> Turn back around. He's got a full size crucifix he's carrying on his shoulder. Right. Sorry, I just thought this, this would be good. But yeah, she climbs the, the bloody ladder of screams and finds uh, the guys who kidnapped E.T. up there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those little like weird orange like <laughs> PPE packs. Yeah, so we, we flash cut to Hillary Swank in a classroom explaining that all of that was because the government was doing deep well injection with toxic waste because this is a horror movie and the only way to introduce a skeptical protagonist is for them to be teaching a class they will never go back to <laughs> or mention again. Yeah, I still don't fully understand what class she is teaching or what she is a professor of. Angry atheism? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, she's the right. atheism professor. She's the angry atheist professor, and then I think. Yeah. She's like super fucking racist. Yep. <laughs> like, do you guys, re like she was literally said these fits. words. Like she was talking about how it couldn't possibly be that there was like a curse or anything religious happening in this like town, Concepcion, that it must be <laughs> science. And she's like, so you've got these people who are horrifically poor. She literally said the word, throw in a population economically depressed enough to believe in almost anything. Yeah. <laughs> what? She might as well rub her arm and go, throw in the fact that they're shmur shmur. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. I think the Everybody. First, first sentence they open to her in front of the classes, in a third world shithole like Concepcion. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Right. But her whole thing is basically like, yeah, so a whole bunch of poison plus poverty plus religion equals miracle? No, it doesn't. My job is checking nope. miracles. You're all stupid. Religion is stupid. Science 48, religion zero. My whole experience. Have a great weekend. God is dead. I'm out. Mic drop. Angry atheist. <laughs> Your homework for Monday is to disprove one miracle. <laughs> and the yeah. kids are all like, sure, right on. This is a totally normal class to be taking. Yeah, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad this was in my pre wax <laughs> yeah. So now we find out who Idris is. And Idris is her TA... At Louisiana State. <laughs> it makes no sense, you guys. It's like her, he's like her sexy TA who just like hangs around carrying her bags for her. Like, I don't know what he does. And she like very overtly is like, well, ever since you got that master's degree, I can't even keep you as my slave anymore. They gave you your own office. And I'm like, what is his master's degree in? What do these people do? I don't want to speak on Hillary's behalf here, but I feel like she kept trying to make up handshakes with Isdris Elba on set and he just Stop wasn't it. into it. <laughs> That's the that. business relationship. Don't, that you don't, get don't go feel. under the leg. That's so it's worse no. now. It's worse. <laughs> Stop it. Not your anything. But yeah, he still apparently <laughs> takes her messages and this is where she gets the call from father face burn. Yeah. Bernie faces in the photos. He, he's there to tell her that, this movie will eventually have a plot. And like, if the fucking audio levels weren't bad enough, he's whispering like this quietly during the entire phone call. <laughs> and I was is, like, do I need yeah. to turn on subtitles? I have no idea. So this is the only time when there's any real exposition. And he's like, I'm just going to whisper it so you can't really understand the plot of the movie, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I, I had the subtitles on and it was just... Pss, 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 <laughs> so it didn't help. Yeah. Uh, so now they do, they're explaining like some backstory, right? And of course, all the evil that we're about to like experience in this film had to come from Africa because racism. Of course it did. Okay. I want to spoil her backstory right now because when you watch this movie through that lens, it's so bananas. So here's <laughs> her backstory. This is going to be revealed like 16 seconds before the end of the movie. She was a Christian and she used to show up to places with Bibles instead of medicine. So love her. Love this for her. <laughs> right. And one time she did that, but she was in the Sudan and it didn't rain for a little while. So they sacrificed her husband and child. Right. Yeah. But not her for some reason. She was cool. But not her <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> but again, like the racism of this movie's backstory is astounding, right? Is that we, as the audience, are just going to be like, 
Yeah, no, if you do hang out in Africa for long enough and it doesn't rain, they will kill you to their crazy African gods. That's true. I don't know. Right. That's true. I've heard about that. I, I saw this as a positive thing by the people of Sudan because they killed these <laughs> shitty missionaries who showed up with Bibles and no water and no food and no medicine. So, you know, fuck you. Oh, where's that doodly do? Right. And they're like sacrificing animals probably because they're hungry. And she's like, that's not going to help. You don't need to eat that meat. You know, it's like, what are you even <laughs> right. doing? Like Christian propagandists love to capitalize on American racism or, you know, in, sure invent do. it or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now I really want to watch that doodly do where it cuts over and she's like, you sacrificed my husband and child to your barbaric gods. And they're just like, no. oh, no, no, we just killed them because no, fuck you're just you guys. the worst. Yeah, just because fuck, fuck you. you. Yeah, I'm an atheist. <laughs> you're just <laughs> shitty. Right. Yeah. So we get a little bit of that exposition here, but not the whole thing. Don't worry. It's just like shots of machete sharpening and her petting her daughter and being like, you're going to live forever. Oh, yeah. We're still totally confused at this point as to what the yeah, fuck absolutely. is going on in this movie. Right? You don't have to be there, but we were watching the movie. <laughs> so with that exposition sloppily spilled across the table, it's time for us to plot, damn it. So <laughs> for no fucking reason, Idris introduces her to Doug Blackwell who has a mystery for her and Scooby-Doo to take on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's from a place called Haven. It's a subtle name called Haven, Haven, <laughs> Louisiana. And they have a river of blood. And right. she's a science miracle debunker expert. He wants her to debunk this. And he's yeah. like, yeah, we're pretty sure it's a river of blood. And she's like, is it really a river of blood? And he's like, yeah, pretty sure. And I'm like, can't you tell the difference between blood and red water? I don't, <laughs> seems, you don't really need some fancy tests for that. Lots but. of things are red. You can like try, <laughs> let's all name things that are red that aren't blood. There's so many. <laughs> I'm sorry, we don't have your fancy university science to tell whether or not something is or is not human blood. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You have to come to our small town in the middle of Louisiana and solve this mystery. Yeah, and she's literally like, you could like maybe call a scientist there. <laughs> yes. Like you could maybe just do this yourself. And he's like, no, it has to be you. Yeah, and she's like, your... okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, he goes, well, we don't want to seem silly. And she's like, I mean, you just came and told another adult you think you have a river made of blood. So <laughs> that's going bad. It's yeah. going bad. <laughs> Right. He actually says he doesn't want to call the TV station and get their scientists because, uh, you know, our town doesn't want to look dumb. It's definitely a plague from God. We'll look dumb if the TV <laughs> station shows up. <sighs> also, they happen to be blaming the river of blood on a 12 year old girl who killed her brother and the town wants to kill the girl now. Right. Yeah. And he might as well say, I actually happened to notice your doodly do just before. You got a little girl thing. We got a little girl thing. I don't know if that's, could that be your inciting incident? And she's like, it could, it could be my actually, inciting you know incident. What? Okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> that ties right in. And by the way, he really fucking slow played that element, didn't he? Right. He went to a professional debunker and he was like, ooh, river of blood. And she was like, no. And he was like, oh, they're going to kill a child if you don't help me. <laughs> okay. Saved that one in my back pocket. Do you want to call the police for that? We will <laughs> no, never think call we're the silly. police for No, anything. yeah, that's, no. we're not allowed to do that. We learn that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with that introduced, they're going to head over to Haven, and one of the locals is going to give them a tour of the town's lightning sand collection. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fulgurite. I love this stuff. I actually have some. I have a piece that I got in Morocco. It's kind of rare. And okay. Like, I'd Ooh. sort of like more money. Are you a money. demon? You have to tell us. <laughs> yeah. Are you in a blood cult? <laughs> maybe. I have yeah. no idea. Sounds like maybe. I Yeah, I didn't know of the tie-in. <gasps> but... And we're both only children, Heath, except for my sister, who I just forgot about. <laughs> edit, edit. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. She doesn't listen. It's not TikTok. It's fine. <laughs> Say whatever so, I want. So do you guys remember how when they're pulling up in the town, there's this like plaid shirt woman who I guess yes. turns out to be dude's wife, maybe? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I don't mm -hmm. know. They never really make that clear until the end. Like everything is just clear at the end. And she taps on the glass of the of the truck that they're in to, to like welcome them. And my dog freaked out. <laughs> like she knocks on the glass. She's like, hello. And so he's like, oh, somebody's at the door and runs downstairs. And so it took me like, you know, five minutes to calm him down and tell him, no, it's okay. Nobody's at the door and get him back up. And then 
two more times. Every time she speaks in this film, my dog freaks out on her. <laughs> he just hates this actress. <laughs> yeah, like this actress is triggering to kill her the dog. I just thought you guys would want to. She know. was an under five in Pretty Little Liars. Mark, 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 mark. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes that friend. <laughs> so, yeah, the reason that she shows her the lightning sand, what is it called? Fulgurite. Fulgurite. There's no she, reason. It's just what are you no, there's say no right reason now? that never comes <laughs> yeah. back. It, it, they it, reference it like 40 times and it does not tie into the movie at all. No, yeah. she's just like, yeah, our town gets hit by lightning a lot. Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Huh. So now she meets the local preacher and hey, credit where credit's due. This is authentically Southern. He's like, hi, are you a Christian or do you want to go to hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the most accurate part of the film. <laughs> Doesn't he ask Idris Elba if he's Christian here too? Yeah, even though he's rocking an enormous crucifix. <laughs> yeah. He's basically like, you seem like you're black. <laughs> Not sure you belong here. Yeah, right. And he's like, oh, well, maybe you should read the Bible. And Hillary Swank's like, yeah, no, I've read the Bible. Maybe you should read it again. <laughs> yeah, because there's this study. Have you Actually, it's been it? replicated multiple times that devout Christians you know, seem to know less about the Bible. Just in case you get the order of the plagues wrong for the rest of your movie. Maybe read the <laughs> All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bonk Idris on the head. Is this okay? <laughs> it is okay. That's right. See, I've read the book. 48 books. hours. Let's start the clock. <laughs> So now they're going to head over to the river, which the local cops inform them is, in fact, still blood. <laughs> yes. they, the scene opens and the, this like rookie cop comes over and he's like, still, still blood. Is it still blood? <laughs> still? Okay. But they do make it, I got to be honest, they make it look pretty cool. Like there's all these dead fish floating in it. I was wondering, do you think that they like made a CG red? Like, did they colorize it in post or did they actually like dye an entire river red? Because basically <laughs> her whole rhetoric is that like there's toxic shit in the river and that's a horrible thing to do to the ecosystem. But then they did it to make this movie. Yeah, I'm going to hope it's CGI. Maybe they just got plenty of that bacteria. They were like, it's probably, we, we, so we can either kill like 300,000 people. That's how much blood we would need. That's like the only red thing that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's a back, you say there's a bacteria we could do? Okay, yeah, let's we just, could just use dye, river. you guys. We could let's just use dye. That's a better idea. <laughs> and then it won't smell so bad. Do you notice that? They walk up and they're like, oh God, it reeks. And I'm like, maybe you should like clean all those dead fish out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them away. What are you doing? <laughs> and this is the first time in the movie that Idris and Hillary will science for us. And they're just they're like dipping Q tips into the blood <laughs> and being like, hmm, I'm not sure if this is blood or not. <laughs> are you gonna taste that with your ear? What are you gonna do? need to send this to the lab. Oh, yeah. They do that reagent <laughs> test. Yeah. What is that reagent test called? I should know this because it's all over forensic files and I watch forensic files a lot. Oh, you anyway. put the thing into the jar with the... Luminol. With the thing. There you go. Is that what they... Yeah. And so they do that and then it turns black and she's like, that's not even on the scale. <laughs> that's how well, you science. There's nothing on the scale for plague blood, but that black is not... <laughs> and like, that doesn't help us at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now Hillary and Idris are going to wade through the blood for science. They don't tell us why. <laughs> like they're in a boat. They're perfectly fine in the boat. Like why do they get out and just keep going? It's very unclear. They could it's have just very... sampled from the from like the shoreline. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's. It seems like they have already checked. You know, I feel like the water, if it's blood up there 20 yards ago, it's going to be blood here at the redness. But they decide to like, all right, we're going to split up and double our chances of Finding the blood magic, not together. <laughs> so they wade through. You know what's so sad about this movie to me is that like Hilary Swank and Idris Elba are legit good actors. Yeah. And so even though this is a horrible movie with a horrible script, they like, they own it. Like they did commit. Mm -hmm. And so there are moments where you're like, oh, okay, I'm into it. I'm watching it go, oh, fuck, this is a horrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fooled me again. Yeah, I actually enjoyed watching this movie like way more than normal. I like enjoyed my time watching it. Right, because it was like professionals who were trying their best. That's the thing is yeah. some, I don't, I want to know the backstory of everything that I, because right, you think Hillary and Idris could have turned to someone at some point and been like, 
is this bad? I think the thing we're making is bad, but we're here. I think they knew. I think it was like a slow year in 2007. Yeah. Like Idris's wife was pushing him to upgrade the kitchen. <laughs> you know, it. you got to do a film. Oh, fine. This shithole is across my desk. Let's just do it and hope Listen, nobody sees it. Hillary's trying not to do another thing with Clint. So she's like, oh, I can't. I'm doing flip, flip, flip. The reaping? <laughs> I get it. I see how this happened. But yeah, she's she's like waiting around and this is where we get our First, pop scare. Pop scare. And this would be a a, a 12-year-old little girl pop scare. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like they always, why does it always have to be a little girl? Are little girls that creepy to people? This one was. <laughs> I thought she was a good actor and she scared me throughout the movie. She was a good actress, but I found her endearing. I found her lovely. There was nothing scary, but I just wanted to help her. <laughs> okay. I wanted to get her some food and a nice bath. That's fair. You know? I wanted to murder her. Teaser for later in the movie. Did you personally want to bathe her yourself, or is that inappropriate <laughs> to do as an adult? Uh, spoilers. Right, right. She was a little old for that, I think. A little old. But yeah, little girl pop scares and then runs away. And Doug shows up and he's like, "Yeah, that's the uh, little girl everyone wants to kill." We we let her loose in the woods where her brother died. You know. Yeah, it's Louisiana. Well, Doug does a pop scare too for no reason. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary Swank's walking through the woods. She just got sort of attacked by a, a pop scare of a little girl. She doesn't know what just happened. She got doodly dude and into a hallucination for a second because of that. Right. And she's walking along and Doug's just like, Catherine, I was just hiding behind this tree. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, do you want to see my chainsaw and hockey mask? She's like, she's like, Homer Simpson. Like, Come on, man, just relax. This, why were you even there? <laughs> Did she have a head injury at this point or was that later? I'm getting confused. Yeah, she bonked. She bonked when the little girl jumped out at her. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, look at these ancient ruins, even though we live in America and nothing here is that old. <laughs> these ancient <laughs> like, ruins. Like I was literally just in Scotland and I saw a bunch of ruins that looked just Beautiful like that. Stuff. And I love those. That Yeah, like old castles that were like falling down and covered in vines. And I love that shit. But I didn't think they existed in the US, except in this movie. Yeah, just in this movie. Like, <laughs> yeah. These are... Dozens of years old, these ruins. <laughs> it happens a lot faster in Louisiana. You, you put up a castle, yeah. right back up, real fast. <laughs> so meanwhile, back in the river, Idris Elba is testing it with a Q-tip. He's literally dipping a single Q-tip <laughs> yep. into the river, giving it a COVID test. Which he needed, apparently, to wade all the way out to be able to do. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. And then it begins to rain frogs. Frogs. Right. And it's really loud, the frog raining. Like, so loud. Like, the volume levels in this film are killing me. But I don't... Like, frog rain would never be that loud. It sounded like gunshots on the water. Yeah, it was aggressive. It was aggressive. I love that they didn't have enough money to do any more than, like... Like, yes! 15 frogs worth of rain. Yeah, tops. Like, like, a cartoon rain cloud of frog just over Idris Elba for a second and then yeah. done. I wrote in my notes, I have nine frogs you guys can use. Nine. <laughs> right. Which is hilarious because it's like they spent so much money on other things in this. Like there were parts of the movie where I was like, man, they got a good budget for this. And then the frog thing where they're in Louisiana. And by the way, so I used to work as a, a TA, actually, not like Idris, though. I had a very different relationship <laughs> with my professor um, at the University of North Texas. And we would I, I taught animal physiology and a and anatomy and physiology. And so we did. We dissected frogs quite a lot. And they were those same kind of southern bullfrogs. And I remember once asking the person who sources them, like, do we order these from a lab supply company? And they were like, no, they're, they're live caught frogs. Huh. So we could do cool dissections and they were always full of like crayfish and stuff in their guts. And so that's the thing. That is the cheapest prop <laughs> in the whole movie because you could just literally, they were in the bayou. You just catch a few of them and then use them, but they didn't want to do that. Oh, now I'm understand. picturing Uncle Mark just running around the bayou and waiters. <laughs> I fucking hate this. Come movie. on, I'm we done. need we need ten max. You guys are assholes. I just did eleven. You're done. <laughs> We're done. Their poor PA working for like a hundred dollars a day, <laughs> like catching frogs. Hey, Daniel, you know how you said you wanted to be more involved in production? Great news. <laughs> <laughs> Great news. Because <laughs> the frogs, they did look real, didn't they? Oh yeah, yeah, I think they were. Yeah, I think they were real frogs. So they. They could have gotten more. They're just lazying it out there. Yeah. So frog rain complete. Doug invites them back to his house where 
the rest of the movie is going to take place. He's just like, well, <laughs> this scene is over. You guys want to come back to my place? <laughs> right. <laughs> and the scene. <laughs> and we also get the explanation of a little bit more about the plagues that are starting to happen here. But they're going to be out of order. And I wanted so bad to like, you know, they spray lamb's blood all over the building so that God passed. Like, read the Bible. You can check for the solution to this. <laughs> lamb's blood does it. He Then he knows you're Jewish and he passes over. That's how Passover got its name, I'm pretty sure. But then, like, <laughs> that causes flies and gnats to show up. And then, like, the pile of dead lambs that it causes the pestilence with all the... And like it, oh, there's boils after that because they touched. But the Keith, you don't understand. This movie was made for Americans. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This movie was made for people who never actually read the Bible. No. They just want the the gist. <laughs> exactly. I've heard of some plagues. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's some frogs and locusts. The Spark Notes version of the Bible, if you will. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Well, the point anyway is that Idris Elba is beautiful, and we're going to take a quick break. I I'm done explaining. <laughs> Honestly, you guys don't have to cook for me. Don't be ridiculous. What? You've been on the show two months in a row. It's the least Heath and I can do. Well, you seriously didn't. Uh, so, for the ladies' first course, a quart of mango nectar and sink scotch, also a quart. <sighs> Eli, this is a drink mixer. And Heath, I mean, I guess people like scotch. Well, but... okay, sink scotch. It's slightly different. It's scotch that, that you drink over the sink. So no dishes. Okay, cool. So there's a lot to unpack there. And apropos of nothing, have you guys ever heard of HelloFresh? What? Oh, what? Hello? Don't, Hello? No. I'm doing the You're embarrassing thing. I'm doing you're, 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 you're not shouting in front of Kara. I'm doing it. You're not shouting in front of her. What's HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? Okay. I'll kill you. <laughs> Well, they're America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. I mean, cooking seems like a lot of time. Yeah, nectar comes in a jug, so I just... Easy. Listen, guys, HelloFresh offers convenient delivery right to your doorstep for easy home cooking with the family. And the recipes are easy to follow and quick to make with simple steps and pictures to guide you along the way. Yeah, I, I just don't know that I want to lock into a meal thingy. You ordered a pallet... Of Oreos, a palette. I am going to eat those, though. That's the, I'm gonna. Guys, guys, HelloFresh is actually super flexible. You can keep your fridge stocked by adding extra proteins or sides like garlic bread to your weekly order. And plus, you can easily change your delivery days or your food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Wow, that sounds great, actually. Yeah, it is. HelloFresh sent us a box to try and the recipes were delicious and convenient. A great way to skip a trip to the grocery store. All right, Kara, I'm sold. How do I sign up? All you got to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful80 and use code Awful80 to get a total of $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful80 and use code Awful80 to get a total of $80 um, off across five boxes, including free shipping on my first box? Yeah, that's... That what I just ju said. Just said that. Yeah, just, don't just correct me. That. You're making a hostile work environment. You're embarrassing yourself. Oh, you're hostile work. Stop it. Now, if you'll excuse me, the second course I've prepared is almost ready. As is mine. Is it Oreos and more scotch? Yes. Also, yes. Yes. You guys are weird. Gee, Miss Santa Maria, thanks so much for coming. No problem. After all, I'm a lady skeptic and I don't believe in anything. Right. Uh, right. So as you can see, our river has turned into blood. Well, I think you'll find that it's actually infected with rare bacteria that turned it red. Uh, oh? Skepticism. R right. Uh, but uh, as you can see, also, everyone in town is breaking out in miraculous boils. Mm, uh, see, a deadly reaction to said bacteria. I mean, I guess that seems... It's skeptic. Sure. Okay. Uh, but there's also the matter of the fire demon. He's just kind of been wandering around, shooting fireballs for the last week or so. Or has he? I mean, he's standing right there. I can, I'm sorry. Hey, what up? How's it going? Quiet. I'm skepticking. Ha, love you on brain games. I said I'm skepticking. Sorry. Sorry. And we're back. 
When we left off, the mean atheist was not able to explain the movie scenario with science. And now <laughs> she's driving with their host, Doug, and he's asking if seeing two out of 10 Old Testament plagues has convinced her. And it has not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is weird. And he's like flirting kind of yeah i couldn't tell you if this was like a romantic drive or if it was like <laughs> i don't know persecutorial <laughs> like it was kind of like sexy angry i'm not sure i think maybe all those words were in the script notes and so it was confusing <laughs> for the actors they were like yeah. oh sexy persecutorial is that what <laughs> is that what you're going for director <laughs> okay but they arrive at the sheriff's mansion Giant Greek temple. Right. Yeah. A yeah. haunted mansion. Of course he lives in a haunted mansion. He lives, he lives in a haunted mansion. <laughs> of course. And yeah. he's like, so that's my haunted mansion. Also, apropos of nothing, I'm an only child. Firstborn, you could say. <laughs> and lastborn. For, I don't know why I ever said firstborn like that. Uh, so I'm an only child. Firstborn. One more time. <laughs> and earlier he's like, so I have this huge mansion. You guys could come sleep there because we don't really have a motel. And she's like, that's weird, but okay. And then when they get there, he's like, Okay, so I made up the f living room right off the front door with a bed for you. <laughs> and then that Idris guy can sleep on the couch in some other random room. And she's like, what about all the spare bedrooms in your giant mansion? I, my playrooms, I play in them now. <laughs> you I'm sorry. Sleep on the couch. Is this a one bedroom Greek mansion. temple slash mansion? Yep. <laughs> it's so stupid. The I rest is that. an open floor plan. I'm doing, I'm trying to do a thing. Excuse me for needing a seventh observatory. Thought you liked science. <laughs> All right. So now it's dinner time and it's it's also time for a backstory lightning round. Uh, we will find out that Idris Elba, <laughs> the eloquent black Englishman, comes from the hood. Oh, of course because he does. he's black. <sighs> yeah, he's got bullet holes and all these like like tattoos. Like it's the laziest exposition ever. Like I was a gangbanger and then I found God. Uh, End of exposition. Yeah. Right. That's but it. Again, it's Idris Elba, and he's not like doing a voice. So he's like, ah, oh, yes, I remember my days in the <laughs> game. <laughs> right. I'd say we'd pop up right about four just after tea and uh, do one of those drive by shootings in a lorry. What fun it was. <laughs> I'm Idris Elba. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, Idris, okay, I don't know if you can conceptualize this character very well. And he's like, yeah, I was in The Wire. And they're like, no, no, but, but Idris, you got to dig deep for this. You got it. And he's like, yeah, you know The Wire, like the best TV show ever. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Idris, you got to dig no. deep. <laughs> going to be a gangbanger. You can do this. Is that on BET? Is it called again? <laughs> Wire? I'll write it down. I'll don't fist pump. Down. Don't do it. <laughs> Mom, Idris. Stop no, it. Never mind. Sorry. Sorry. This is also where we get our second not scary pop scare, which is um, he's grilling them some fish and they're like laughing and talking and they look back and pop scare. The fish is all covered in flies and maggots for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Which is out of order. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Science is all wrong. Also, <laughs> not that scary. All things considered. <laughs> No, none of them seem yeah. overly concerned about it. And then it just like cuts to a scene of them just like scraping it into the trash. Like, <laughs> okay. drop that on the floor. Can't eat that now. Like, no, it's covered in fucking flies and maggots. Like, <laughs> yeah, I wrote in my notes. So pizza? Pizza? Yeah. <laughs> I guess we fixed that pop scare with pizza and the garbage can. Okay. That wasn't really yeah. particularly scary, was it? And yeah. then they just never eat any more food the rest of the movie. Nope. They, they, <laughs> food is no more. But sadly, before they can order pizza, they get a call that something's wrong with a farmer's cows and they need to check it out because the, the dead livestock plague really mattered a lot more to Bronze Age people than it would to <laughs> modern people. <laughs> And Andrew Selba is like, okay, I know I, you know, I have a master's degree. I'm a scientist, but like, all right, that's blood river, literally raining frogs on my head. Now maggots, flies and livestock pestilence. You, you see the, like, it's a magical pattern. It's right from the plagues. And Hillary Swank's like, no, it's probably Fisteria, the bacteria. It's the thing that happens. It explains all that. She's, yeah. she's really sticking to her skeptical guns here. I appreciate that about her. So they arrive at the farm and we're going to get another pop scare here. This is a uh, pop scare cow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that poor cow. He just wanted some love and tore through the side of the car for it. Yep. 
Uh, yeah. And Idris Elba was like, okay, well now a bull tried to headbutt our truck to death. You want a new th- Fisteria? Still Fisteria. Okay, you think that's- <laughs> yep. Yep. Cool. Interesting. Yep. Feels like the CDC would be working harder on Fisteria. It's just causing a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I never heard of them making a big deal about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I, I love when the cow attacks the car because they're obviously going for scary, but it comes off way more Jaws the Ride. And <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of fun. <laughs> oh, no. Up, down, up, down, up, down. There's this great moment where Idris obviously checks in with the camera like, is that it? Did you get the shot? And then it, it jumps him up again. And he's like, oh, oh, still scared. Oh. <laughs> So now Idris is going to check in if Hillary is convinced by four plagues now that they've seen the dead cows and the sick cows. But no, she is not. She's still not convinced by the dead and sick cows. But at this point, she does do like this really in-depth explanation of how all of this could be secondary to a bacterial infection. And I'm loving it. This was great. It's like really good. Yeah, it all made sense. And as she's like going hard, because he's like, yo, I might have a master's degree in debunking plagues, but <laughs> I actually believe this is a plague. It's and a super she's duper like, plague. And she's like, let me teach you all the things you should already know if you have a master's degree in debunking <laughs> plagues. But as she's doing it, he's all sanctimonious and look, like laughing at her like, <laughs> you do you think it's that, but it's really just Jesus. <laughs> and she's, she's debunking the 10 plagues from the Bible. She's like, let me tell you how the Bible really happened. This happened and this was in the water and then this and that. And it's totally legitimate. Yeah. yeah. She's explaining all that <laughs> shit I was guessing about before, but with like real science words. I was so happy. I was like, oh, that does make sense. It's not what I said, but like kind of close, but I mean, with smarter words. Yeah. To be fair, I've got a better explanation, Hillary. The book lied. It's a lie book full of lies. I am <laughs> science. I am the science now. <laughs> but as she's doing this and I'm like getting a little aroused, Idris is actually standing opposite her, like clutching his cross pearls. Like, oh my, <laughs> oh my, with the science. Like there's a scene. It's so great. He's like clutching the cross. And she apologizes. She's like, hey, I'm Sorry, I just said all that science stuff about your favorite book. <laughs> <laughs> so now Hillary's going to go inside the farmhouse and look around because we've only met one creepy kid so far and there's a second one inside this movie. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just up late, kid with insomnia, drawing, smoking a cigarette, middle <laughs> of the night. Yeah. And the little boy is drawing the cows dying and in his child's drawing at the center of it is pop scare little girl using her magic powers to kill all the cows. Right. Yeah, just drawing a clue to the movie, you know. So she takes it because that's what every movie does. Oh, can I have this drawing? She sure. does. This will be my roadmap to the rest of the film. Why does she take it? Would it like to analyze the picture in the lab? It's crayon. Just It's like dead cows. <laughs> You're done. There's nothing. That's it. I'm going to see if this is blood too. <laughs> so she goes outside and this is where the farmer explains to her that Last year, his wife went to deliver cookies to Pop Scare Girl's mom. And when she looked through the window, they were doing a satanic ritual. Oh, that's what he explained. Okay, so yeah. he can't talk like me. And I couldn't understand a word he said. And literally, I wrote, last Christmas, someone gave someone cookies, question mark. Oh, satanic rituals. Got it. That's <laughs> yeah, like that was all it. I got from that, that like, was it. long. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> it's just weird that they didn't feel that that was worth mentioning, you know, at the beginning. I wanted Hillary to be like, hey, follow up. Anyone else in a satanic sacrifice cult in town? I would just love to know if anyone else in town... Right. Actually, you know what? Why don't we all name all the Satan magic that we've seen recently or know about <laughs> all the stuff? Let's just lay it out. I have this picture of dead cows in crayon. <laughs> Who's next? This is my next clue. Uh, yeah. So now it's time to check in with Father Foreshadowing. Oh, yeah. 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 The preacher. And he he's going to get his own pop scares here. All right. I have no idea what this guy has to do with anything in the movie except... <laughs> for the phone call he's going to make 30 seconds before the end to be like, oh, let me explain the plot of this movie. We literally have no other way to explain it except for a phone call from me. But he's just going to like see some creepy stuff. And it's not even a good pop scare. Like it doesn't work. Like he's, no. for some reason, he's <laughs> he's walking down like a dark outdoor alley. I don't know what you call that. Reading. That's a reading area. He's, <laughs> he's walk reading. Yeah. Like you do. In the dark. And then there's like a, 
like a statue, but it's not a statue. It's just the shadow of a statue that doesn't exist, which is like, I guess, the normal thing that should be there. And then it turns into bugs. Is that what happened? <laughs> right, yeah. but like you said, okay. he misses it. So it's a <laughs> pop scare that the character in the movie misses. Is like, and he's just like, <laughs> oh, Garfield, what will you get up yeah. to next? Well, I'm guessing they tried to tell Mark to go get like 8,000 flies. And he was like, no. No, do shadows or something. I don't know. I got 10 frogs for you. That's it. <laughs> I'm not over catching this. More fly. No, I was absolutely not. sourcing these books bound in human flesh for weeks <laughs> leading up to this movie. Okay. This is horrible. You didn't even call them out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Then we get Idris Elba doing some science. Shirtless naked for science. some reason. Yeah. Why was he doing naked dissection at his desk? That is contraindicated. I never <laughs> once taught my students to take off their clothes before they did dissection. Okay, 100%. The director was like, time for a big science moment. So, Idris, you better pop the shirt. I'm thinking... <laughs> For yeah. the science. Yeah, I was going to say, were any of your students Idris Elba? Because I feel like you would have taught Idris Elba <laughs> to do science with his shirt off. Truth. I'd have taught him to do drama with his shirt off. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're doing some more science. Oh, look at the 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 fish. The dead fish are actually dead. And then <laughs> then we're going to cut to that night, and it's time for Hillary to do what her character will spend most of the movie doing. Wandering around creepy places. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like in a half dream. And for some reason in a prairie skirt. Nobody <laughs> sleeps in that outfit. Mm -mm. What she was wearing was not a sleep outfit. No, no. She was wearing a pop scare outfit. Yeah, it was a white flowy prairie skirt and like a white beautiful tank top. And there were probably designer, you know, there's like a, it's like a $650 white prairie skirt. And then no shoes ever, because why would you walk around barefoot in an outbreak of fisteria <laughs> like you're a fucking scientist and you think there's bacteria everywhere. So let's just not wear shoes. Good idea. Yeah. She is wearing the wedding dress at an outdoor wedding that everyone knows sucks but has to go to. That's what she's wearing yes, for her night absolutely. roaming. Absolutely. That'd be a cool thing to wear to a wedding. I thought it looked good. I thought she looked great here. She looks amazing in this well, movie. Well, you can wear it at yeah, your wedding. Yeah, she's like super fit. Okay, question for, for everybody. Uh-huh. Remember in The Office where they try to decide if Hillary Swank is hot or pretty? What do you think? In The Office? Oh, like the show The, the Office. The television show oh, The Office. I was like, yeah. I don't remember that scene in this movie. <laughs> oh, now I really wish there was. Like, as she walks out of the room and Idris and the priest start getting in a big argument. What are you talking about? You're 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 distracted by Boys Don't Cry. That's the problem is you're being it's distracted by Boys Don't Cry. You can be hot think, and pretty. You guys are right. assholes. Idris would have said pretty because he gave her like the paternalistic like forehead kiss at one point. Mm -hmm. And then Doug would have said hot because spoiler alert, he dream raped her. Yeah, wow. that's what we're, <laughs> we're about to get there so that she's going to happen. She wanders. We get a, a pop scare French door here, a pop scare repeating record. <laughs> But it's not even, it's like a phonograph. <laughs> yeah. it's, real, out, it's an outdoor phonograph. <laughs> Wurlitzer, yeah. what are you doing? She's just walking through this scary house being like, hey, Doug, um, I'm going to put out this empty room of candles because it seems windy. I don't know why. It seems <laughs> just you're not in here. I think it's his bedroom and she just like walks right in. Like who fucking does that? Yeah. Who just walks into a weird bedroom in a scary haunted mansion? Is that an outdoor record player? I'm going to turn that off for you too, D Doug. <laughs> yeah. Doug, your, your house is mostly made of pop scare stuff. Do you realize, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. And so while she's on the balcony, blowing out the candles and turning off the phonograph, <laughs> she sees like, I don't know, like some tiki torch. It, like, it seems like there's like a, a white supremacist march down the way. Oh, yeah. And I mean, she's it is like, Louisiana. Right, I should go see what's going on down there. That's that's a good idea, right? I'm going to walk through the woods barefoot, check out the mystery fire now that I've turned <laughs> off this record player. Yeah, this all I'm, makes sense. Spoiler alert, people are going to try to get Hillary at the end of this movie, but turns out all they needed was a box held up by a stick based on her behavior. So <laughs> really went to a lot of trouble they didn't need. But yeah, she finds Doug and he's um, talking to a coffin with his random bottle of Southern booze. Yes, yeah. his bathtub jib. <laughs> I, lo I love that she walks right up and then like sees kind of what's happening and just tries to walk away before he notices. <laughs> you 
<laughs> but then he sees her and she's like, yeah. hey, I was just walking away from you. What are you doing? And he's like, I'm just talking to my dead wife who died of cancer. Let me tell you all about how horrible her death was oh, of cancer. Oh, great. Yeah. Could you tell me? Yes, I was hoping you could tell me about that. <laughs> and as he's telling her, she's getting a little randy. I don't understand. They're both like, oh, dead husband, dead wife. We should do it. We should fuck. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The, I, this is what I wrote in my notes. I was like, am <laughs> I reading into this weirdly? <laughs> you were not. You were not. Oh, I really really miss my baby daughter. Yeah, because then in the next scene, they're fucking. Yeah. Which is weird. It's weird. Yeah. So your family got murdered. Uh, are we having a moment? No. <laughs> I think we are, though. So we get a weird sex scene. So it's unclear. Are they... Did they have sex or is this a dream? Because Wikipedia thinks she has a dream about them having sex. She has a dream about them having sex, but then it turns out that it actually happened because she's Pregnant. Oh, so yeah, I think they had the end of the movie. Real sex here. Right? It had to have been real sex because she flashes back. Oh, I know that they had real sex in the reality of this movie. Oh. But is she? Did they have sex while she was asleep? Which is not yeah, sex, by I the way. I don't know why like, I put it that way. That was weird. Yeah, that was a weird way to say that. I think it said it was dream sex because he's obviously evil. Duh. Oh fuck! I'm giving away all the movie. I mean, but, the movie yeah. gave away most. Yeah, of you don't want to spoil this movie for everybody. <laughs> So I think the issue is that Doug is evil and he somehow like dream raped her. I thought he drugged her with the stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know if he actually needed to do that because in this movie, you can just do whatever you want because it's lazy. Yeah. So I think that they <laughs> just right. had him sleep rape her. Okay. Yeah. All right. But we see that yeah. scene now. It but it was a dream, but it wasn't. Yeah, it was really weird. And also the whole part leading up to that where he's talking to her about her time in the Sudan and she's like giving all the exposition about being a dickhole missionary and like her husband being killed. <laughs> For some reason, because I couldn't understand his voice because he has like a southern accent and then also which is weird because I'm from Texas but his southern accent was like <laughs> shitty and fake but also because you guys type the notes and the Sudan is lowercase in it I kept hearing the sedan and I was really <laughs> confused because I thought he was asking her about the car she was driving but then that sorted of so, so how'd that out. missionary work go with the uh Toyota Camry yeah no? he's like how did you pick that sedan and I thought she was going to be like you know it's reliable it has um Psycho airbags. Like, it was, yeah, it was weird. Good mileage. You know. <laughs> really like the mechanic. You don't get local. pulled over a lot. I don't know if you know the stats on that. <laughs> the normal silver sedan gets pulled over less. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so the next morning after her sexy dream and or sex, Hillary is making herself breakfast of blood eggs. Pop scares. Pop scare blood eggs. Pop scares. <laughs> yeah. Also, that kitchen is really shitty. Yeah. yeah. Like, did anybody else, was anybody else like, this house is enormous and like quite lovely. And then it's like the tiniest little one bedroom apartment in New York kitchen. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. It really skimped <laughs> on the kitchen. They went with giant Greek pillars and then they were like, and I don't know, like third tier kitchen for Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Anyway, that's like all I noticed in the scene. It actually looked a lot like our kitchen in South Georgia that was like, you know, $250 a month for an entire house. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you That's probably it. where they shot it. Just Heath wandering through with his little trash bags. <laughs> yeah. Hillary, don't touch my stuff. My stuff's labeled in the kitchen. It's me throwing out blue apron <laughs> full of flies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but not HelloFresh, everybody. HelloFresh is great. They don't give you bloody eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that one's free, HelloFresh. They don't give you bloody eggs. Oh, I'm buying they don't give you bloody eggs.com. That's our next ad. Just yes. everyone be ready for that. I like how I was so distracted during this whole scene. All I wrote was, fuck, Idris Elba is so hot. Yep. Mm, it's okay. I did the also, same thing. It's, yeah, she is weirdly fair. too close to her TA. I do not like their relationship. It makes me very uncomfortable. Mm -mm. Although I will say, I would watch the hell out of a remake of this movie where they have a realistic TA teacher relationship where she's like, all right, Idris, we've got to check if the river's made of blood. Oh, um, I actually can't make it this Sunday because my, <laughs> right. um, my grandma died again. <laughs> no, it's the same one. She, she came back to life. Uh, they buried her in the pet cemetery. And it was right. Like thing. that drives with the plot, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she she walks around a dream sequence for a little while. We have some really silly pop scares. And, and we also get the flashback to her daughter being murdered by random Africans. 
okay, but she's being an asshole missionary again. Yeah. And the movie doesn't realize they're doing that. And it's great. <laughs> it's true. The irony is like lost on them. So good. Yeah. She she goes up to one of the guys in Sudan where she's being an asshole missionary. She's like, yeah, just not to belabor the point, but murdering won't cause rain. So you're sacrificing an animal. And he's like, uh, fuck your face. So I'm just going to eat this animal. Go away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, just don't murder my daughter to make it rain. Why would I say that? Just, oh, okay, never mind. It's weird. <laughs> Bye. I, I jumped to that. Ugh. So Hillary wakes up from her dream sequence, flashback, racism, and back at the mansion, Doug is snooping through Idris's science stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, he's just got his desk is disheveled and there's apparently a bovine cell yeah. on the screen because he's looking at it under the microscope because miracle <laughs> debunkers are also pathologists. And he's looking at it and the guy's like, what is that? And he's like, oh, this is a healthy bovine cell. See how strong its walls are? This is what I hate in movies where people don't take like a, a moment to do basic science research. And this is what I can tell about these screenwriters is that they like learned a word or two. And then they were like, how do we work this into the script so we sound smart? But Mitochondria. The, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then the basic science is like, okay, just to be clear, once again, going back, going back to your intro biology class that you took in seventh grade. Endoplasmic reticulum. <laughs> You're doing well. Do you it's remember which type of cell has a cell wall? Plants. Yes. And which one only has a cell membrane? Animals. Animals. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking cow cells don't have cell walls. I would like <laughs> an Asian kid to cheat off for this part of the <laughs> podcast. I had I had one of those in seventh grade, so I would like one now as well. <laughs> Just don't cheat off of Idris Elba because he's a bad <laughs> miracle scientist. <laughs> All right. Well, we got some science. We got Idris Elba getting Hillary Swank through her nightmare very tenderly and lovingly, I must say. <laughs> and he wants her to become a Christian now. I agree with whatever he thinks, but <laughs> she's a skeptic. So she's going to go figure out how <laughs> Fisteria bacteria causes fireball hurricanes and demon magic. And we're going to take one more quick break and then we'll be back with the swanky conclusion of the reaping. Okay, everyone, time to start third grade here at Haven Elementary. Who brought in a picture to show the class? Oh, oh, I brought a picture of my dog, Rex, and uh, and also my dad sacrificing my dog, Rex, to the god, Baal. <gasps> Excellent, Nathan. And Timmy? Uh, I drew a pretty flower. <sighs> Just a pretty flower? Um, Yes. Timmy, what is the rule here at Haven Elementary? Only creepy prophetic drawings. Yes, creepy prophetic drawings. Exactly. I'm going to need you to add some prophecy to that, or at least some blood. Okay. I also drew Joe Biden winning the election. Don't fucking jinx it, Nathan. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. He's gonna. <laughs> And we're back. And if the plot of this movie has taught Hilary Swank's character anything, it's that she needs to explore more places all by herself. <laughs> so she, she goes walking around alone in a blood swamp with demon cows. And then she breaks into the house of a magical plague causing child. So that's where we are breaking in. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And just so you know, like, you do not want to sneak up on a house in the South, even if you're as white as Hillary Swank. These are people who are, I would say, defined by not liking to be snuck up on in Louisiana. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. A lot, a lot of laws there kind of um, yeah. that aren't on your side if you're the breaker <laughs> slash enterer. Yeah, you don't want to enter like the little gate at the front of the property. You definitely don't want to check out their secret blood closet inside of their house that you've broken this into. Is, this is so oh, that's what, what is this like. about? This is amazing. <laughs> she pulls the lever, their secret blood closet opens, and then she does not go down into there. <laughs> and look, I don't believe in the supernatural, but if I ever find someone who has a fucking hidden door, 
best case scenario is they have weird fuck stuff, right? The best <laughs> case scenario <laughs> is you're looking at Penn Jillette. Worst case scenario, you really, <laughs> really, Penn Jillette has a fuck closet. I really, <laughs> really don't want to go down there. It's weird to me that she's wandering through this house as if she's never been there before and is confused by its sights of poverty. You know, she's yeah. like, ooh, they don't have any money. <laughs> and as she's like reaching through and like pushing on things and like testing things out, she goes into like the pantry and with no clues, no cues, no first try, she goes, I bet you I could open this pantry. <laughs> there's a secret room behind it. Wonder if there's any secret wall doors. The first one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, found All it. Right. This wall moves it's out of the way. You know, I've been doing this for 15 years. Never found a wall door. And they said, <laughs> they said, stop pulling on it like it's a magic bookcase. But who seems silly now? But yeah. Before she can go down into weird fuck closet, little pop scare girl shows up again. And she's. She's perioding. <laughs> Is that what was happening? Yeah. Oh, I was waiting for you guys to introduce this. <laughs> Wait, that Devin so was that? She wasn't just like cut Heath, on her leg, maybe. You didn't even know that that's what was happening. They like overtly. She was like, "So this is you becoming a woman." Yeah, she because I, I wrote in my notes. Hey, oh, maybe don't offer the birds and bees talk a la hostage negotiations <laughs> with a feral child you just <laughs> met. Oh, I love this. I'm okay. so glad you introduced this. I was <laughs> waiting to see how the boys were going to talk. About, and and she's perioding. I, I would have got that all wrong. I would have. I thought it was like, oh, you're becoming a woman. Like you're becoming a man. Like you cut your knee, and now you gotta like deal with the pain. I missed it. Okay. Yeah, there's one thick trickle of blood coming down one of her legs on the inside. Yep. She's obviously not wearing shoes because she's feral, <laughs> and it's just there. Like the whole movie, it's there actually, right? Yeah, the, she will be, she will have a sh slow, gentle <laughs> trickle of menstrual blood <laughs> running down her leg for the rest of the movie. Yes. Spoiler alert, it is actually going to get grosser. There is a thing that will get grosser than the slow trickle of menstrual blood. <laughs> oh, do you mean Hillary Swank's behavior here? <laughs> well, that's definitely one of it. Where she's like, hey, uh, feral child, is your mom here? No answer? Cool. How old are you? No answer. Okay. You want to have less blood and dirt on you? I'll just give you a sponge bath. I am going to bathe you now. No answer. I'm going to take that as a yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah. She goes to bathe the kid and she has, you know, weird magic horror movie blood visions. But I really wanted her to wake up from the vision. And the kid's just like three steps back from her. Like, hey, don't don't try to wash me. I'm a... <laughs> No, no, thank and you. it's like with a filthy, she finds like a <laughs> filthy Fisteria rag <laughs> yeah. and like runs it under a little water in an outdoor sink. <laughs> and it's like, hey, I'm going to wipe your vagina with this. <laughs> and the kid's like, I don't think so. No, thank you. No. you know what? I'm going to stop doing the mute thing. No, <laughs> please don't do that. Horror movie doodly do. Horror movie doodly do. Yeah. But Hillary wakes up from her horror movie doodly do after trying to wash a strange girl's vagina. And this is where Devil Girl's mom shows up. Oh, yeah. And this actress fucking goes for it. Right? Mm. Yeah, she's good. She's great. She's good. She she walks in. She goes, are you here to kill my daughter? She's like, no, no, not at all. And she's like, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. OK. See, when you first asked me, I wasn't sure. It wasn't clear which answer you were looking for. <laughs> Am I going to kill her? Yes or no? I said, no. Do you want me to kill her? <laughs> yes, in case that wasn't clear. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. But then she's like, no, I'm here to help her. And she goes, she don't need no help. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, but you just said, I don't understand. Pop scare and then the daughter strangle yeah, tackle. has like rabies or something because she's like trying to eat her. <laughs> she puts yeah. the mom in a chokehold. some eating. She has like a little <laughs> girl chokehold on the mom. <laughs> And I really wanted like to watch a full sleeper hold as this child just like lowers her mom to the ground. Like, shush, 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 shush. I was about to get a vagina wash out of this mom. Don't wreck this for me. But see, they couldn't do that because that would require that she has lines. And at this point in the movie, I'm wondering if they just didn't give her lines so they could get away with paying her like the extra rate. Yeah, the under five. You know, rate. like oh. not a speaking part rate. Yeah. Because, yeah, she's not spoken yet. Maybe they did. In this whole film. And in a surprising twist, 
in reaction to this little girl jumping on her mother's back and trying to strangle her to death, Hillary Swank's character is like, well, it looks like you guys have got this situation under control. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to go. <laughs> Well, she offers to give a hand for a second and mom's like, get the fuck out. She's like, yeah, no, you're, I'm the problem right, right now. Sorry, <laughs> I'll take off. Would washing either of your vaginas be helpful right now? No? Okay. No? Okay. Right. I, I figured an offer. Just, okay. That's uh, 0 for 2. Swing and miss again. So meanwhile, back in town, Idris goes to like the center of town and it realizes that <gasps> everyone has lice. But they don't look like lice. They look like lice are white. And they make them look like ticks. Uh, also, lice aren't like super fast runners, <laughs> as, as far as I know. Yeah, they're like these huge, like they show them and they're like a hundred times larger than a louse and they're running really fast. Yeah. They're like beetles. They have beetles on their heads. <laughs> and there's just this one very funny moment where we watch them shaving all the kids' heads and they're like, this must be a magic thing. We got to kill that little girl. But in the background... An extra is doing that perfect, like, I don't know how to anything with my hands. So you just hear gently <laughs> patting a kid on the shoulder. I wrote in my notes, it's okay, honey. The bald look is hot. We can put this video on OnlyFans. It, it is. That's just, I don't, can't tell what you mean by that. But also, is that how you treat, you don't, they make little combs. They do. And like a shampoo, you don't have to shave everybody's head. You can still get lice but you even can. if your head is shaved. <laughs> To be fair, you can. Everybody's there. This town's solution to this lice is going to be to kill a twelve-year-old. So, <laughs> I'm guessing they're not up on all the latest lice technology. <laughs> right. I think you're. I think you might be right. What there. if we just light everybody's face on fire? No. no okay, that's too much. Uh, that's too much. Different. Or we could just light. We could just burn all the dead cows and have a giant <laughs> barbecue. <laughs> like it must have smelled so good at that death pit. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. We we pass by the death pit for a little while. We see them burning the the dead cows. <laughs> I love that. There's a pile. It's so it's they've plenty of space for, you know, the, the 50 cows that that died, but they clearly like stacked them. <laughs> so at some point some kid was like, "Dad, do we have to like pile them with yeah. the dead cows?" And here's the thing. Have you ever tried to stack a cow? Okay. It I have. It's ridiculous. I haven't. <laughs> it's not easy, I don't think, cuz they don't they weigh like Hundreds and yeah, hundreds fairly of heavy. Yes, Way they are. better big, question. Right? Have you ever tried to stack a cow, Karen Santa Maria? <laughs> you will never know the answer. For that oh, <laughs> I knew you were behind the cow stackings out in LA. <laughs> First, you don't sweep your florist. Now you, got you that stack that right. You're a demon. You stacking cows. We know what's up. We get it. We're we're firstborns. Which, by the way, you mentioned fulgurite. Little. Little thing that I think about fulgurite. I don't. I'm not a fulgurite expert, but I have some <laughs> fulgurite on my bookshelf. You have some thoughts. It's like so. What fulgurite is is, as we mentioned, when lightning strikes sand, which can happen in desert locations. Not sure where all the sand is in Louisiana that the lightning is striking because it's usually not like just a beach thing. Like I got mine in Morocco. There's a lot of sand there. Yeah, I don't picture people with like beach umbrellas next to the bayou just like hanging <laughs> yeah, out I don't, on towels. Where's all this sand that the fulgurites make? So when lightning strikes sand, it ca it makes these little tube structures because basically it superheats the sand so much that it gloms onto all the sand around it and makes glass. So it's like a little tube of of like thin, brittle glass you can't make a wind chime out of that I was because it'll say, break. Not the best wind what chime. we will learn is that this town uses all their fulgurite for wind chimes. <laughs> yeah, and it, it would just crumble. It just doesn't make any sense, you guys. And then they walk around barefoot sense. in piles of glass that they've created <laughs> yeah. glass on shards. everybody's front porch. Shaving their kids' <laughs> heads. They're covered in, covered in fisteria bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> is that a real thing or did they make that up? 50-50, no, they made it up. 50 no, it's real, but it's not bacteria. It's algae. Oh, oh okay. There you go. Yeah, it was claimed to be responsible for fish kills in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, it's an algal bloom. There you go. That's you got a real thing. For, uh, and it has a cell wall. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would, but not a, not a cow cell. No. no. But they do call it bacteria, which is confusing. And those words rhyme. That's bacteria. true. Yeah. Bacteria. I, bacteria. I, I felt... <laughs> Rhymy when I said it earlier. Funny, yeah. Anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so 
now they're at the coroner's <laughs> to check out the body of pop scare little girl's older brother who she killed. Yeah, well, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. And uh, nobody witnessed this. They, they unveil the body to see that he has turned into a mummy. Right. He looks like an old man. Like he's he's like in an advanced stage of decomp, but also he looks like he's aged a little bit. Yeah. Or something is weird. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And Idris Elba is apparently also a medical examiner because <laughs> he's the one like the the autopsy guy is like well just stand in the corner you can put on the gloves and examine the body. you got this one love doing the wire by the way just love you yeah, so good it's very weird so good. at the end i don't want to spoil it but uh, are you taking notes on a conspiracy i, I, I don't want to it's the whole thing and so they roll they roll the body over <laughs> which you and there's always like a sickle do. scar which you always do yeah. and there's a sickle scar that matches the sickle of the Bernie face photographs that matches the sickle of the secret blood pantry that matches all the sickles in the movie because when you don't know how to write, you just make there be a symbol and then you put it in all the significant points of the movie <laughs> and then you say, look, it's the devil. Yep, that is that is exactly right. And <laughs> what I should point out is like, this is going to indicate that he is part of like a satanic cult right? Which means that he was being inducted into the satanic cult and they were like, great, uh, where do you want your evil sickle brand scar? And he was like, lower back? I think a tramp stamp, tramp stamp. Tramp stamp. <laughs> great. Love it. And this is where Idris Elba's like, oh, okay, so, you know, there's like a murderous cult here. We should call the police. <laughs> so yeah, he's like, let's call the FBI. No. No, she says that. Oh yeah, she says that. And he's like, we're way past police. Yes, that is the exact quote. She what does goes, that mean? we should call the FBI. And he goes, no, we're way past. We both wrote that. What does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean to be past the police? <laughs> but it was just like, okay, well, you know what? It is what it is. Moving on. The uh, the whole river is actual human blood. We're figuring this out. The FBI does not need to be involved. <laughs> oh right, because they get the they get the results of the Q tip test. Yes, they also got their lab they got their lab results back, and their lab results aren't. Hey man, did you send us fucking blood? <laughs> <laughs> and he actually like does the calculate. He's like back of the napkin, two hundred thousand dead bodies. <laughs> Would have to make that much blood. Where is the blood coming from? Is my question. <laughs> Uh, and pin in that because the answer is going to be yuck. The, the answer is a strong period. Yep. Apparently. <laughs> Spoilers, Heath. Spoilers. Demon that, period. It's a demon period. Uh, but just yeah. then, Hillary gets a call from Priest Ex Machina to tell us what the fuck is going on in this movie. <laughs> sort of. Sort of to tell us that because... I don't really, the exposition doesn't even make sense. He just reads a bunch of gobbledygook out of a book. Yeah. The firstborn, secondborn, something about the firstborn, and th then the secondborn. I got to introduce the secondborn into this film, even though that has nothing to do with anything biblical. Um, you following? He, he invents like a sequel, a prequel to the Bible here. He's like, oh, you know what? There's a Bible like negative one, and it's, it's the firstborn, secondborn thing is switched, and there's a demon cult, and the movie makes sense now. Uh, bye. Yes. And Satan Child. Right. So what we're <laughs> supposed to believe is happening, right, is that Pop Scare Little Girl and Pop Scare Little Girl's older brother and mom are part of a ancient satanic cult, pre-biblical ancient satanic cult that kept its firstborns and murdered its secondborns all to give birth to the perfect Satan child. Wait, how did you get this? I watched did this you, movie. Like, <laughs> did you rewind it and rewatch that scene like four times? Because I was, I had no idea what, what he was talking I'll, I'll about. I'll tell you my secret it's when nonsense. it comes to these movies. The nerds over uh -huh. at Wikipedia, they do all the movie summaries. And the nerds, <laughs> they've argued it out on the chat page. And so when I look at the plot summary, it tells me what the fuck was happening. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. Got, Cause I did not get any of that from his exposition. Yeah. That should have wow. been the subtitles, just the <laughs> Wikipedia arguing. Page. <laughs> <laughs> the chat page on Wikipedia. But yeah, the point is that God is punishing what we're supposed to believe at this point in the movie, because spoiler, there's gonna be a twist, is God is punishing this town for what this little girl's family did. And also, apropos of nothing. There's also an angel that can defeat that satanic cult and is meant to destroy them. Wait, what? They said that too? Yeah, because remember, he's like, you have to kill the little girl, Hilary Swank. And she's like, I'm sorry, did you just say you read a book and now I have to kill a little girl? And he's like, yes, that is that is the plot of the movie right now. Yeah, he's like, I'm looking at this ancient, <laughs> beautiful etching 
where there's a scary little girl. They keep going back to that stupid picture. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there's no way that book is older than the Bible. No. Like you'd be wearing white gloves. <laughs> you know, it would be like underneath the like plexiglass thing. Like I actually saw a book at the Cambridge Library that was written in like the 1500s and it was hand calligraphied and like gilded and it looked like it was going to fall apart if you breathed on it. Yeah. Like I don't understand. Anyway. Can I just tell you from experience, librarians hate it when you do wacky shenanigans around those kinds of books. They, they For sure. Very little sense of humor about those books. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they are bound in human flesh. That was never referenced in the movie. I just recently interviewed somebody on my podcast who studies books bound in human flesh and it's been on the mind. It's pretty interesting. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Missed on their opportunity. Yep. I was just thinking about skin books a lot recently. <laughs> um, right on. I, on. I actually have. Yeah. So now Hillary's back at little girl's house, but this time she's going to go into spooky symbol basement. Damn it. Wait, before she goes in, you forgot all about the bubonic plague. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Everyone, they, they get upstairs from checking out the body and everyone's dead of boils. Yeah, they've got buboes, yeah. which, of course, makes sense that the buboes would follow the lice because that's how the plague works. But we have an antibiotic for that now. And they just, I guess, didn't want to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Route. Wasn't the actual plague like fleas and not rats? Well, the rats carry the fleas. The rats carry the fleas, but it was right. the fleas like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Podcast. all does fit. Joe Rogan. I <laughs> what does that have to do but with Joe Rogan? The frog rain. The frog rain? <laughs> oh, yeah, the frog rain. That one I can't really explain. Okay. Hillary Gunn. Skeptic. <laughs> Skeptic. <Yeah. laughs> but, but she's going to go. We're all Christian now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's going to go into spooky symbol basement uh, and she finds little girl's mom in there who explains that she's gone over. Oh, right. Yeah, the mom's just down there for no reason. So Hillary Swank's like, hey, you just you hanging out down here? Uh, <laughs> you don't have like a magazine or anything? You were just you were just standing there. And at this point, like we still think, I thought we think that the girl is evil. Right. I didn't really know that there was a satanic ritualized thing happening. I didn't get that from the priest. So I was very confused as to who built this torture chamber. I thought maybe the little girl was an ironsmith. Because <laughs> it's like, it's like pretty profesh. Yeah. There's like an autopsy table and there's a lot of like cool vintage medical supplies that they must have just been like thrift shopping for for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very fancy down there. I love that in your mind, though, the little girl did this. Like she was yeah. like, can I have the basement for a playroom? And her mom was like, whatever you want, honey. And then she comes down the next day and she's like, oh, autopsy table. Fuck. Hmm. Right. Because if you don't, if you didn't get any of the exposition, then you literally just think the girl's evil and everybody else is like, why haven't you killed the evil girl yet? She's a fucking weirdo. She's like doing ritualistic murder in my basement. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought the plot was. But now you've enlightened me that the mom was like in on it. Yeah. Yeah. This movie's about parenting, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> it's about attachment style. And then mom shoots herself, <laughs> uh, shoots herself in the mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was sudden, but not really. We kind of saw that coming. She shoots herself in the mouth and then little girl starts to come downstairs, which is supposed to be scary, except we know her mom's dead body is there. And so I'm just writing in my notes. I'm like, hey, you going to let her find her mom's dead body? Okay. <laughs> not, not super cool. Not super cool, Hill Swank. Oh, right, because she's because she's hiding from her. Right. Yeah, Hillary Swank goes and hides here. Because soon the bleep bleep happens. Yeah, I was going to say, this yeah, is she hides. Heat's favorite part of the, the movie. Bleep bleep. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, the next L bleep bleep gets you killed by demons. You deserve it. I'm happy. <laughs> but it doesn't because she's the protagonist. So she stays alive, even though she could have been killed a million times. Right. And that's just when the uh, town all pull up to kill the little girl. Yeah. So right. they, they, they pull up and she goes outside and what's waiting outside, but a bunch of not locusts. <laughs> <laughs> I, are they locusts? Are they cicadas? They're, are they grasshoppers? They're CGI crickets is what it, they look like. They're definitely, <laughs> I think they're like grasshoppers. I mean, someone could have just Google imaged locusts, but they... <laughs> They did not. These are multicolored and range anywhere from puppy sized to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> one's like six foot seven. But they're beautiful. Yeah. Like for the first, 
I don't know, five minutes of the scene before the girl starts to control them and make them like kill people, they're like lovely and enchanting. And I'm like, I want to see a swarm of locusts. That's stunning. Yeah. Well, and she's like playing with one. She's got one in her hand. It's kind of adorable. And then yeah. everybody shows up with guns and doesn't realize that like, okay, well, she's she's going to sick the locusts yeah, on us, I, right? Like that's- I want to say the guy who cocks his gun and decides to shoot the demon little girl really rolled the dice on those locusts being decorative, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Right? laughs> uh, I don't know. Will God have thought of bullets? I hope God hasn't thought of bullets. Chariots of iron, here we go. Are bullets good for a swarm of locusts? Uh, we'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, you could totally. He was he was doing his locust target practice earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the best use of ammunition. Is popping off locusts <laughs> one by one. <laughs> but yeah, as Kara said, she summons the locusts and they all attack all the towns. Well, not all the townspeople. They attack the townspeople who showed up at the house and they all get locusts to death. And uh, Idris hides in the mausoleum, the ancient ruins right. we saw earlier. And, <laughs> and Doug, <laughs> Doug dives into the river of blood. Yeah, so I'm now really confused about the geography of this town. Great because question. I thought everybody was at the house, but immediately they're in places other than the house. Yeah. Like the girl is at the mausoleum. Is the mausoleum in his backyard? It must be. It, it must is. be in little okay. girl's backyard. That was her other playroom. She's like, I'm going to build, you know, the murder chamber and a crypt mausoleum <laughs> in the backyard. Right. And does the river run also right by her house? Because everybody's just able to show up places in like no time flat. Yeah. Yeah, it's unclear. I don't get it. It's unclear. I also, to be clear, I do not find this girl scary. I find her very sweet. And I I feel like a mothering kind of response to her when I see it. Like, I feel bad for her. So I don't think that they did a good enough job of making her creepy. No. Because I was just, like, worried about her well-being the whole time. No. I, we are supposed to think maybe she, Hillary should kill this child because she got a call from a priest and locals in Louisiana don't like her. <laughs> right. <laughs> and but really she's just like dirty and like she's been she's a neglected child and it's kind of sad. Like that's all I see is a neglected child who needs some help. And she took like an adorable positive turn here. She was scaring me a little bit earlier, but now she mm -hmm. like she's a cricket whisperer and she attacked <laughs> a bunch of assholes with a lynch mob of guns trying to kill her with cricket. Like she's awesome now. Yeah. yeah, when they try to, like, make her creepy, what they do is this CGI thing in her eyes to light them up. It just makes her look more like a princess. Yeah. There you go. See, now that's the princess you can't order on Zoom. The one that has an army of locusts at her command. <laughs> Where's that Disney movie? All right. So so Ben's in the crypt and he radios Hillary to let her know he's safe and sound in the ab abandoned crypt. <laughs> 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 right. We get a little more bleep bleep here, just which added to the humor to me. It was just like yep. bleep bleep. Uh, I'm in a crypt. Uh, I found a giant room of dead kids over. And she's like, bleep bleep. Don't know how to respond to that. Over. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just do separate things for a little bit more? <laughs> cool. If it was realistic, she would have just written back LOL, which is what everyone writes back when you don't know what to respond. <laughs> 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 Crazy. Dot, dot, dot. Hooray. <laughs> Although, I got to say, so yeah, he discovers a, a crypt full of dead babies. And I just want to say, they don't turn into zombies, but Idris Elba versus 400 zombie babies is a great fight. And this movie could have redeemed itself if it was willing to show it to me. <laughs> You're right. Because instead, he's like, the girl's out there. I'd better hide in here. And I'm like, you could take a 12-year-old girl, Idris Elba. <laughs> he's got that. Like, you're a big dude and you've got bullet holes in your body. I would watch that too. <laughs> Idris Elba versus a little girl. Absolutely. <laughs> And he's got that big cross around his neck. Aren't you supposed to be able to just like burn that into their flesh or hold it up or something? Like, I never know which movie tropes apply and don't apply yeah. in films like this. Yeah. The power of Christ compels her, right? Exactly. He, he looks like he, he's immune to the locusts because he's Christian. Right. But before he can go out and fight that little girl, he makes a blah noise. And so Hillary runs to Ben. But sadly, Idris Elba or not, he is the black guy in a horror movie. And now... He's dead. Of course. They gave him longer than most movies would. They did. I'll give them that. This is also where Doug shows up and she's like, hey, Doug, did you jump into the river of blood? Because yuck, dude. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just to catch you up, Doug, uh, the little girl, she is actually Satan, but 
she trusts me, so you go away now. I'm going <laughs> to finish the movie myself. Yeah. She's going to go out and, and stab this little girl with the sacrificial knife she stole from the underground chamber. But before she does, she asks Doug one last time, how do we know what's real? And he says, faith. <laughs> Christian movie. movie. <laughs> so here's the fun thing about this. I did not want to do this movie. A listener recommended it. He was like, oh my gosh, you should do the reaping. And I was like, this just looks like a bad horror movie. I get that it has the plagues in it. I don't want to do it. So he took a cell phone video of this scene <laughs> where she's about to stab the little girl and the little girl's like, faith. And just with the caption, Christian movie and emailed it to me. And I was like, amazing. Touche, Halloween spectacular, Christian movie. Amazing. <laughs> but yeah, she, she like, Rolls around with this little girl for a bit. And then they have the Martha moment from Superman versus Batman. She says, Wait, explain. So explain. Uh, the little girl is like, I'm so lucky. And she's like, what? Because I have you. And in one of the flashbacks, that's what her daughter said right before she got murdered by the Sudanese human sacrificers. Actually, it's what the daughter should have said, but it's not. It's what she said. To oh, her that's daughter, right. Which yes. Is, yeah. Is, that's like not good parallel structure, but whatever. <laughs> 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 I fixed it by accident. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you fixed it. This is also where the movie remembers that they didn't finish the plagues yet. And they're they're already out of order, but they're they're just like, oh, shit. All right. We have like a few minutes left. Ah, uh, did we do the darkness yet? No. OK. Uh, little girl, you want to make darkness happen for a second? Darkness. Great. Three days later, because that's what it said in the Bible. I guess we flash forward three days. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary Swank's like, cool. Wasn't there like a hailstorm and fire? But before that, oh, shut the fuck up, Hillary. fire. Great. Okay. <laughs> no, it was before the dark. Okay. Three days earlier, hailstorm, fire <laughs> and darkness. Three days later. Are we good? Cool. So they don't actually jump around in time like that. But Heath, I'm glad you pointed out the darkness moment, because when the darkness rolls over, both Hillary and the little girl are like, Darkness isn't super scary in modern times. Do we just wait for three days here? Yeah. If they had showed us three days of silence and then it's been like super dark for a while now. All right. This movie would have been the real boyhood. Do we fight at the end of this? <laughs> but the point is, she says the like, they have the Martha moment where she's like, I'm so lucky I have you. And this is where Hillary has a ex machina flashback moment where she realizes the little girl's not the devil. She's the angel sent to stop the evil cult. Which is obvious the whole movie, I thought. <laughs> Absolutely because obvious the little girl the is movie. not scary. <laughs> yeah. Like, she's a sweet, sad victim of neglect. And then she's like, why is everybody trying to kill me all the time? This is really fucked up. Yeah. And the movie is hoping, <laughs> let's be clear, I what the movie so is stupid because I got fooled by that for most of the movie. <laughs> I was like, fuck this little girl. You shouldn't kill her. Okay, I see what they did at the end. They've switched it. Well, here's what the movie it. managed to convince Heath. The movie walked you into a town that wants to murder a little girl and was like, trust me, you're going to be on these guys' side for a while. And he was like, yeah, I'm on fucking board. Yep. Let's kill that little girl. Pretty clear what's happening. Yeah. So she has that realization. She comes out of her doodly do, but who should come walking out of the fire? But Doug, who we now know is evil and part of the firstborn cults thing. Which he referenced earlier <laughs> when he made a point to say he was a firstborn for no reason. Fuck, did I give away our whole cult when I introduced myself? That's dumb. I don't know why I did that. Did I say just only child? I said firstborn and only child. Yeah, that's weird. That is yeah. weird. That's on me. Okay. And yeah, I do live in a haunted mansion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he, he, sh sure. he shouts his exposition at her. And by the way, this is his backstory now because he's we know he's part of the evil cult. He's like, my wife died of cancer. And that's why I t turned my entire village into a satanic cult. It was a weird couple of weeks, but I got them all on board. <laughs> they voted for Trump in 2016. So it wasn't that hard. I got to tell you, Trump to ball is, is, is pretty quick <laughs> jump. <laughs> But yeah, he's like, ah, oh, your God killed your family. And she's like, God didn't kill my family. Atheism, African atheism did. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> all those atheists with their with their blood sacrifices. <laughs> uh, and then it starts hailing fire. Yeah, well, she reminds him. She's like, hey, uh, do you remember the last plague was killing all the firstborns? 
isn't your whole cult based on firstborns? And he's like, there's a meteor right behind me, isn't he? And their meteors start <laughs> raining down <laughs> and kill all the cult members. Oh my God, this movie's so stupid. And even after you've explained it to me, I'm still a little confused. So by stupid. This so stupid. So yeah, what happens at the end here? So the meteor, <laughs> the meteor shower thing is that's like supposed to be part of the plague that's supposed to be like the storm with the hail no and the no fire, that's I the guess? death of the firstborns right maybe what they just this? combine they combine those two they're, steps okay they're work. just yeah. melting them together <laughs> yeah okay. yeah just combine them and then why does uh why do they levitate here at the end oh they levitated i thought they just vanished yeah remember he grabs her and he's like haha god you can't kill me with a meteor i have hillary swank and god's like I can actually just make her fine and kill you with a meteor. Boop. So they levitate for a second and she's fine. Oh, I missed that. I must have like sneezed or something. <laughs> <laughs> Got distracted by a skin book I was reading. <laughs> I'm into skin books. So yeah, all the cult members get killed. And before this thing ends, we see Hillary driving away with Demon Girl, but we're not quite done because she turns to her and she says, everything's going to be okay. It's just the two of us now. And the little girl's like, no, there's a baby in your tummy. And that's when she realizes when she had sex with Doug, she is going to give birth to the to Satan baby. But before I, that, <laughs> before that, right after all of the people die from the meteors and then just vanish. Do you guys remember there's like a pan below ground? And like creepy music, they start to pan below ground. And then it's like the editor just got lazy and was like, I'm just going to cut here. I don't, there's nothing. <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like it was like for no reason. It was the weirdest. It was my favorite weird part of the movie. They're like, dun, 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 going down, down, going down, down, dun, dun. Oh, never mind. Let's cut. Go it was okay. so weird. There's cut. nothing down there. Great. But yeah, she's filled with Satan babies and maybe the reaping is going to have a sequel. Right. That's obviously they're leaving it for a sequel, but we know that's never going to happen because this movie got 8% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> it sure fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last thing before we wrap it up. If you were God, what would your final plague be on America? You'd, like what's happening right now would be. That's fair. No, tough but fair. Okay. Tough but Solid fair. Right? Like, 2020. <laughs> It's like question. Trump and Pence and like, yeah, yeah. It's like pretty, you could just rattle off all the different, it's, yeah. It's Wouldn't really need to be God, would you? Nope. Eli, same answer. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to do it for our review of The Reaping. But the spooktacular continues. So Eli, what's on deck? This is one we've had suggested literally for years now. I've been waiting to do it and I'm super excited. The Exorcism of Emily Rose. <laughs> Fantastic. And with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 269 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Kara, as always. And just in case anyone's new, where can they go to hear some more from you? Uh, you can probably just go to my website, carasantamaria.com. You'll find my podcast there and links to other things. You can go to Twitter, Instagram, all the good stuff, and Patreon. I love skinbooks.com. Redirect <laughs> straight to carasantamaria.com. <laughs> Snap it. <laughs> it. It will now. All right. Well, check out all those useful internet resources that we just mentioned. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus. Available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slonick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Kara Santa Maria and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Something, something, plague, locust, coronavirus, Trump, Stringer Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Stringer Bell, indeed. The town of Satanic Orphans with Buzz Cuts had an adorable Lord of the Flies scenario for a while. Hillary Swank's character had to drive all the way out of state and wait 24 hours to kill Satan's baby. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> Amy Coney Barrett got confirmed. 52, 48. Uh, a plague on all our houses. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.